Hi everybody, Dr. Ben Shamoya here, the LA chiropractor right here in Century City, Los Angeles, California. Uh, great topic today, it's pretty in depth. We're gonna be going into several layers. This is gonna take some time. Uh, we'll have some questions and comments down below if you have any later on. But we're gonna be talking about greatness within. But this, this one's not an Anthony Robbins greatness within, this is the ability to heal and repair from within okay so that greatness that we all have we were all born with that uh, internal mechanism that helps us heal and repair so we're going to dive into that we're going to talk about um, uh, our own internal natural immunity to bugs and viruses and and bacteria uh, so uh, this is a great topic for what's going on right now. For those who might not know, uh, today is March 25th, right, mm -hmm. 2020. Uh, there is uh, the COVID virus that's going around and uh, the city of Los Angeles has come to a complete stop. But we're still here serving a lot of our patients. So let's jump into it and let's see what we have. A little button here. Uh, there you go. Great. Uh, one of the reasons we're going to have this topic today, I got my assistant helping me out. My assistant. One of the topics that is really challenging the way you think about what true health is and where your health comes from and uh, medications and vaccines and all of these things that serve purpose but I want to I want uh, us to really think up to about 50 60 70 years ago when there was no antibiotics there was no vaccines how did we get this far yes I understand there were plagues and things that came and wiped a large amount of people out totally understandable but we still survived we still made it how did we do that how did we do it without pharmaceutical drugs how did we do it without getting all these shots we did it and we made it and we're still advancing and so a lot of it comes not just from uh, medication but really it comes from understanding how uh, bugs and viruses work and taking the steps right washing our hands now it's gotta wash your hands like 900 times a day today uh these days right um uh, cleaning our water cleaning the pool systems uh, uh you know using uh, bleach and chlor uh, clorox all of these things to help get rid of things and sanitize and sanitation that's come a long way who's helped you know we don't give sanitation the credit that it needs that uh, that's helped prevent big um, uh, pandemics and uh, uh, epidemics to, from uh, really happening so um, the more we know how to handle things the better we've come uh, and a lot of it has been naturally so I want to challenge your way of thinking and how you think about health so let's let's dive into some uh, more here so uh, I live in Los Angeles everybody's running everybody's exercising they're eating well they're drinking water they're doing all of these amazing things they're working out got uh, yoga they got Pilates they got CrossFit they got all of these things and they're doing a great job we, we, you know we're, we're one of the healthiest areas um, all over the country you know from from weight to a lot of things that we're doing um, meditation all of these great things but one of the questions is is uh, what do we need to do to be healthy and if we have this answer and we're doing it why do we have such funky results let me show you where we stack up in the entire globe as far as our rating uh, with all the technology with all the science with all the medicine and medications that we have we rank 37th in overall health in the world there's third world countries that are doing better than us okay um so th this is this is has to be alarming okay so uh, uh, we have all the science 
We have all the research. We have all the drugs. This country alone utilizes 75% of the global pharmaceutical drugs. Why are we still number 37? Right? So these are things like I want, I'm getting, and I'm challenging your thinking. Why are we? These are great questions you should be asking yourself. Not what's the, the next miracle uh, that's being conjured up in a laboratory, but um, why with all of that, with all the technology, are we still here? So uh, one of my goals here is how to bring the responsibility of health and being healthy back into your uh, power and not the power of, of, of a pillar model. So let's talk about what's going on. One of the things that really is clear, and we can see it now, more people are understanding this with all the aches and tiredness and headaches and fever and runny nose what really really happens is traditional medicine really just treats symptoms okay uh, it never really w focuses on an issue so if we can just cover up a symptom are we really healthy if you have acid reflux but you got to take a purple pill every day uh, did that really make you healthier? If you have high blood pressure and you're taking two blood pressure medications a day, uh, are you really healthy? And we see it here all the time. Patients come in here and I ask them, hey, what's going on? Oh, well, I take uh, two blood pressure medications. I got a cholesterol medication. I got uh, a diuretic because of the swelling in my feet. Other than that, I'm healthy. Really? You're taking four medications and you're thinking you're healthy? Just because it's controlling your blood pressure? Just because it's uh, uh, covering up your symptoms? And that's what happens. People keep taking more and more medication. You know, an average uh, uh, person over 60 is taking an average of 12 different medications. Wow, well, I know I'm not taking one. I know uh, people in my family are not taken. So somebody's taken uh, uh, the 12 that uh, I might not be taken. So sore throat, what do we do? We go to the pharmacy, we get something, we cover up the sore throat. Did we really help our immune system? No, we just covered up a symptom. Cover up the cough, cover up the running nose. We're covering up, we're awesome as covering up. And medication does a really good job. Now. Is there time for medication? Absolutely. I think it's very is a short-term emergency crisis thing where you need to get out of a crisis. Antibiotics for short term. Not every time you have a running nose, right? I have kids in here that are under 10 and been under 8 to 9 rounds of antibiotics. So these are things that I question. I question, well, where's the child's immune system? Where is, where's their true health coming from? So if we continue to cover this, I, I have a great analogy that I use in my class, is uh, imagine your car and you're driving your car and your check engine light goes on and it's telling you, hey, there is a problem. Just like a headache is telling you, hey, there's something going on. Maybe you didn't drink enough water that day, but if, it, if you're having headaches every day, that's a whole different thing. And people keep taking Tylenol and Advil and Aleve to cover up and mask their problems. So is that really being healthy, right? And taking two tablets for your blood pressure every day, are you healthy? Or are you just taking that so you can continue having bad habits of your diet and no exercise? So these are my questions. Um, uh, well, Doc, if you did have the inhaler, you know, they could die. Yes, they could. But why do they need to use the inhaler in the first place? And is that something we can look into, right? So I'm not saying the world doesn't need medicine. It serves its great purpose. But does everybody need to be on a medication for everything? Absolutely not. Okay. And that's what we're going to look into. So. This was like the vicious cycle. If you're older, you might be in this cycle. 
my goal, my goal for my clients and patients in the offense, my friends and my immediate family is do not fall into this cycle of medication. It's vicious because one thing causes the next thing, causes the next symptom, causes the next pill that causes the next symptom, right? If you hear our modern day advertisements for these drugs, you can hear the side effects, right? And some of the side effects are absolutely worse than any of the medication, uh, any of the problems that you had to begin with. So uh, we want to take a look at how we can repair ourselves, bring health and healing back into our body, not by this exercising. If exercising worked, then these yoga people wouldn't be in my office. If exercise worked and it was the only thing, I, I wouldn't have all these personal trainers in my office. Okay, so it's not it. If it was just eat well, I wouldn't have all these vegans and organic people in my office because they're still coming here because there's still something wrong. So we have to take a look and find out where at, from the inside out, not taking from something from the outside in, where do we do go from the inside out? The way we were designed, our God-given potential, right? You were designed with power. Whatever you believe in, you were designed to be healthy. So this is the cycle. High blood pressure leads to swollen ankles because now you have low blood pressure. Now you're swollen up. Now you get a dur diuretic to... Uh, get uh, all that water out of you that affects your thyroid, makes you pre-diabetic, cholesterol. It's just a circle. It's one thing after another. I can't tell you how many times I hear this story. And it doesn't matter where you start. You can start with high cholesterol. You'll be on blood pressure medication soon. I don't care if you're on blood pressure. Uh, if you have blood, you're going to be on some something else soon, causing you to take more meds and really being chained to this. And the best thing I love to hear is when people come in here and say, "I heard you have to go to chiropractor for the rest of your life." No, you don't. But if you start this medication, you're doomed because you're on that for the rest of your life. Nobody questions this. Nobody says, "Hey, doc, how can I get off my cholesterol medications?" 90% of people don't really want to do the work to get off those medications. They want to keep their horrible diet. They think it's their genetics. No, it's their lifestyle because most people have their whole family eating the way they do. So they're going to blame it on their genetics. We want to make sure that uh, we really break this vicious cycle. So if you're suffering, you want to get out of this, we're going to show you how just a little bit. So, these are the results of the medical model of treating the effects, treating the symptoms, okay? We're gonna go uh, through this very detailed. I got this from one of these government sites, FDA. The FDA site had this information on it, okay? Foodanddrugadministration.org. Or gov. On a yearly basis, 150,000 people will die from the properly prescribed drug. That means it was the right drug at the right time for that person. They weren't taking somebody else's. They weren't sneaking it in. This was given to them by their physician. 150,000 people died. This virus has knocked off like 3,000 people and people are losing their mind. But if they don't know the real things about this, properly prescribed medication, 150,000, that's a lot. Check this out, street drugs, street drugs, kill only $15,000 a year. We made them illegal. These are illegal street drugs. 15,000 uh, people per year. 150,000 using legalized pharmaceutical 
doctor prescribed, properly diagnosed drugs. Two million people have adverse drug reactions. 80%, 1.6 million, will end up in the hospital due to this. So imagine you're at home, you've been prescribed a drug that's going to help you with your whatever. You take it, and it sends you to the emergency room. Now, I know I wouldn't have a practice if I said, hey, if you came to my office and got adjusted, I'm going to send you to the emergency room. But man, we just can't wait to line up to get some of those drugs and some of those medications. They're even telling you on the ads. These are the reactions. Be careful. But I understand. I understand why we turn to these medications. I understand why we turn to these drugs. This is an old number. These are old numbers. They're gone, Mark. This is now probably double. I think this might be 2010. It's 2020. Billions to treat. Billions. of. You want to know where your insurance money is going? It's going to help people who are having adverse reactions to the drugs that they were given. We need to fix that. These are 180,000 will die from MD caused injuries. That that means they're gonna they're gonna die from the mistakes that are actually happening in the hospitals. But we don't they don't call them mistakes because they can't. It's big liability. So they they cause it what kind the of iatrogenic? Iatrogenic. Listen, it it, it it was gonna happen anyways. It's not where I want to take my risk. So we got 150,000 from properly uh, diagnosed. We got 160,000 who will die from the side effects of those. Okay, so this is just like boom. This is you have a reaction, you go to the hospital, and then you have. So that's another. And then we got 180,000. Man, that's 500,000 people a year. It's a lot of people, and it's not going down. Okay, it's not going down. Now. A little bit earlier, I said, I understand when these ads come up because a lot of people have no hope. They have no hope that there's anything else out there. They've lost it. When people come to our office, they've gone, they, they've gone to their general practitioner. Uh, they've gone to another general practitioner for uh, an opinion. They've sent them to the specialist. They've gone to another specialist. They've gone to the world-renowned specialist of the specialist. And when nothing has helped and they've, they're literally losing hope, they pick up the phone and call us because a friend or a family or an ad or something like that. And it's sad because they've done all the drugs. They've got the misguided surgeries. They've gone through, they, they, they're probably, some of them were close to this because they have no hope. And most people think chiropractic's for neck pain and back pain. And we're gonna dive a little bit closer into that stuff that's going through. So, adverse drugs reaction, they're the fourth leading cause of death. Number one is heart disease. Number one's heart disease, uh, which, primarily is lifestyle choices, not exercising, eating crappy food, obesity. And uh, we can choose what we put in our mouth. We're all adults, we're all grown up. We can choose to do a little bit of activity and exercise. But number four, right after the cancers and everything else, uh, are reactions to these drugs. And, these are just some of the few people that we might know that have died from overdose or just pharmaceutical medication or getting the right thing, but adverse reaction and death. Now they don't call it reaction anymore. They call it an adverse drug event. It's a messed up event. It's a reaction. And it's going to hurt you and your family and your loved ones. 
and uh, I don't care what you, you call them. They this this was legal. This was something they got over the uh, you know at a pharmaceutical. There was no bullets in there. There's no guns. It's not an AR uh, fifty. This was prescribed medication. Whitney Houston. I can go on and on and on um, about this stuff. So those are huge numbers. We want to make a dent in that. I want. I need to change this. Okay, we're we're here to make that an effect. Okay, so I always ask a lot of patients, would you rather be healthy or would you rather be symptom free? Now you might be asking yourself, well, that, that, that kind of sounds the same. I have symptom free friends, family members, and clients who were diagnosed with stage three or four cancer and had not one symptom until the end. So that means stage one, nothing. Stage two, no symptoms. Stage three, still no symptoms. And it took to stage four before they found out that they had a terminal illness, which their cancer, their tumor. So if we go by symptoms, if we follow our symptoms, our symptoms might lie to us, might not. You know, not every gauge in your car is going to tell you exactly what's next. You can get a flat tire. There's no gauges for flat tire. I've had people who were symptom free and had had a heart attack. A heart attack. No symptoms, young, 40s, active, nothing to say that this person was gonna, still had a heart attack. So if we're gonna go by our symptoms, if we're gonna go by how we feel, our feelings can also be decisive. So in my goal, I rather wanna focus on being healthy. I wanna focus on having internal functional health, and it takes a different approach than just exercising. I, I, I had a triathlete, I, I had a friend who was a doctor and a triathlete and died at 52 because of cancer. The guy was a triathlete. I could barely run. This guy was running, cycling, and swimming in the ocean. Okay? So, would you rather be healthy? Ask yourself. Would you rather your family, your children, your grandchildren, would you rather be healthy or symptom free? Again, this doesn't get you far. Let's take a look at how we can bring health and how we have health. So there are signs and symptoms that something's wrong. Again, in your car, you have lights that say, hey, check engine or tire pressure or oil pressure. Now, most of us, we listen to those. And I'm saying most because there is a portion out there that will run that car into the ground. It might be due to financial reasons. It might just be due to they just don't know what to do. But in our bodies, the only way our bodies can tell us something is wrong is they create symptoms. Things like insomnia. It's a warning signal from your body to you. Long-term insomnia is hey, something is out of balance, something is not clear, something is not functioning properly. That's blood pressure, irritability, headaches, fatigues, chest pain, indigestion, racing and skippy heart, depression, all of these things, which we all have, there's medication for almost everything here, right? Something to put you to sleep, blow over your blood pressure, make you happy get rid of your headaches, everything. It's like the check engine light, but now you're taking like electric tape and putting it on your check engine light. You're just driving, you're just covering signs that your body's trying to tell you, hey, hey buddy, it's your heart. It's not working, something's wrong. You need to get checked out. We go to our doctor, which we really trust, and they're there, but infectious disease, Doctors who are studied and they spent their whole life studying infectious disease really truly don't know about health. 
They've never restored health. They, their main job is infectious disease. That that's you go and ask an infectious disease. Here's here's another analogy. You got you got a house. Your your house burns down. Who are you gonna call? Not Ghostbusters. You're gonna call the fire department. The fire department's gonna come in. They're gonna put the fire out. They're gonna do a great job. They're gonna poke holes everywhere. They're gonna they're gonna hose it down. And you're gonna have to get rid of the fire. And for me, emergency and most medicine is hey, let's put the fire out. Now the fire is out. You got your money. You got your insurance. Money. You got to rebuild your house. Who are you gonna call? Would you call the fire department to come back with their hoses and their axes and help you rebuild your house? No, you would get a general contractor and an architect, somebody who understands how to build and restore your house. So when there is crisis, and I'm talking critical. There's medicine, there's the emergency room, there's, that's where we go to because it's a severe crisis, bullet wound, you know, whatever it is. But if you want to restore health, you're not going to get the same person that could just handle emergencies to help you with restoring health. They're, they're specialized in emergencies, not in health. They don't even cover health in school. I think they covered like one class of nutrition. And have you seen some of these medical doctors? My God. Like they're telling you, I, I, I saw one, it was, we were at a senior center and he came and he was telling everybody about his flu shot. The guy was like, honestly, the guy was pretty obese. Okay. And, uh, and he's telling them to take care of their health. And I'm looking at him saying, how many blood pressure pills are you on? So our body's telling us something, and it's telling you something's wrong. Don't cover it up, okay? So let me ask you this. Again, I'm here to ask you a question. Where does health come from? If it came from whole foods, then we should all be healthy. All the people who are eating whole foods and organic and all that. Um, does it come from water? Do we just got to drink more water? Should we drink more alkaline water, or coconut water? Is that where health comes from? Does it come from a guy in a white lab coat and a stethoscope? Is it, in, is it in that syringe? Is that where health comes from? Is that where I want to get my health? Are these bad things? No. I'm kind of blowing it out of things. But uh, if health came from these bottles, then we should be number one. But you saw that we were number 37. If, this, if these pills were health that made us healthy, we, sh we should be good. They're so toxic that if a healthy person took this medication, they'd probably die. So we got to make sure to understand, hey, where does health come from? This is an outside thing, pills, shots, is it food, is it a supplement? Is it within? Is it inborn? What is it? Is it some programming? I, I, I don't really know what health comes from, and that's what we're going to dive into. So again, I want to ask you questions. Where does health come from? come from all right so let's go back and I'm talking way back I'm talking to the basic beginning okay the basic beginning remember everybody in uh, what class did we learn that reproductive class I think it was right where we had the sperm and we had an egg and you had half the information from mom and half the information from dad and everybody's seen that little wiggly thing kind of wiggle the sperm and it gets into the egg and a few days later we got this it's pretty amazing I don't know about you uh, you can't just brush that off you're telling me half a data and half a data some magical way find each other come together and they Without, without anybody knowing anything, they start creating one cell, which then is split into two cells, which then splits into more cells that keeps on splitting until we have a beautiful, powerful life force 
that 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 to me let me i'm in los angeles i have people that remodel a house i'm not talking a big house i'm talking like 1200 square feet you can't fix a house in nine months but you could put a life together in nine months and this is powerful. This is how we're, like, we take this for granted. I'm going to bring you back home. And if you don't have kids, you've got to understand how powerful this is. There is an intelligence inside that cell that knows exactly in what sequence how to do this. So we take two half cells or half data, put them together, and multiply them over and over. And these cells become this human body and the first thing that lays down is the central nervous system that's cool why because it's the conductor of everything it's got an and then the then the heart and then the the lungs and all of these turn into different types of cells and different colors of cells and wow what kind of in, innate intelligence is that right that's this internal wisdom now ladies who've had kids and babies, um, you didn't have to sit there and, and say, hey, you know what? Today, I'm going to work on um, my baby's hands. Or today, I'm going to work on its hair. Today, I want to work on its face. I want to make sure I put... No, you did not do that. Why? Because there was already a blueprint of that and it put everything in the right places. And listen, for for a huge part, everything went in the right place for a lot of people. Yes, I know there's a percentage. I'm not going to go into that. It's not what I'm focusing on. I'm focusing on this innate, this inborn intelligence, this program, this internal thing that the mom just sits there, you know, having good time i don't care whether they eat cheetos and and red bull or you have organic salad and zucchini for the most part you're still going to have a baby part and everything's going to be there right so there is this in in a there's this internal wisdom that started from the get-go way beyond our understanding that in nine months can create this beautiful baby with the fingers in the right place and the eyes in the right place and the tongue in the right place and all the fun things in the right place. And we didn't have to lift a finger. That's a lot of, that's a lot of inborn intelligence. That's a lot of data that's in those cells. They're really, really super smart. You were not designed um, poorly or inadequate you were designed to repair like and and to to heal like this and to be born like this and everything that you ever need was in those in those cells like so imagine that one cell to, cut, to come from one cell to this all that information was in that one cell just like a seed if you've ever seen an oak tree that is massive it's just massive and it started from a seed that big. Everything that that oak tree needed started from that seed. Everything that this needed comes from that. So really, really powerful. Let's see what we got next. So what, uh, what happens is first thing that's laid down is the central nerve system. And from the central nerve system, all of these wires go. A lot of people don't know what's laid down first uh, as a fetus, central nerve system all the nerve functions check this out wow the brain is the conductor through the central nerve system affects everything here wow wow it's all connected it's all connected isn't that cool the brain has to tell the body what to do when to do it how to do it so it's an innate function we don't go around thinking about the food that we just digested we don't go around thinking about the red blood cells that we need to create we don't go around thinking about the bacteria and viruses that we have to fight it's an innate function it's already comes it's like uh, uh it, it's not an extra option that you buy you already come with that. It's standard. 
right? So it's a standard function that your body has. It's amazing, it's powerful. And you got that, and you have that ability to heal yourself. And we're gonna go a little bit more into all of that. But this innate function is the body's natural system that helps control and run and function everything that you have going on from your digestive system to your uh, cardiovascular system to your, we were uh, uh, Dr. LaSalle was talking about systems, right? How uh, engineering is a system of, of things that you need to know and, and your body has systems, right? Skeletal system, muscular system, uh, pulmonary system, digestive system. But the master control of all of those systems is the central nervous system. That's why they call it. It's like the central bank. I can't believe it, but it's the central nervous system. It controls everybody. And it tells everybody what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Billions of billions of bits of information every minute have to go back between your brain and your organs while you're trying to figure out what to tweet next. Your body's repairing. Your body's breaking down food. It's taking your avocado toast and turning it into red blood cells and skin tissue, right? Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. It's awesome. And that's why I love the human body because it was created with so much potential, so much intelligence, so much ability to function on its own that, uh, uh, you know, the, Nobody could have come up with this. It has a backup system for a back. Like you got to really screw yourself up to be sick. You got to really like caught, like you got to really be bad to your body. So uh, let's check out our next, next slide. So with innate intelligence, one of the systems is immunity. Now everybody's panicking. They got gloves. They got masks. They, they're like staying away nine feet away from each other, six feet and Everything's closed down. It's like a ghost town out my windows. And there's a virus. And it, yeah, it's bad. It's, uh, it's, um, I don't know. My dad's 87. He's He came in here. He came to get adjusted, right? 87. Came, got checked. No mask, no gloves. Why? Because he believes in something bigger than that. He was around 87, back in the, he was around before shots, before the flu. Uh, yeah, he saw some people, probably saw some polio, friend, you know, lost some friends to polio and lost some friends to this, that, and the other. I understand, hey, this, this is natural. But he took care of his immune system. This is another system that's inside of you, and this is, we, the, the slide before we looked at the macro now we're looking at the micro you got killer T cells and helper cells a killer cell that sounds badass you got a cell that gets out there and hammers other cells and you make antibodies and macrophages there's a YouTube video of a white blood cell and we're talking remember that innate like even this cell has like brain power. It, 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 it goes through all the cells to find the bacteria and it's reaching. It doesn't have any eyes. I don't know how it does. I don't, I'm not even that smart, but it goes out and it finds the bacteria and it surrounds itself. So go on YouTube. Maybe I'll put a link on that of that video on this so you can check it out after this, but it has it's, it, it knows what's a good cell and what's a bad cell. It knows what's a red blood cell. It just, it knows it's got this innate, it's got this understanding. I don't know, I didn't do it, but somebody gave it to that. Bodies turn into, give antibodies to protect you for future. Is that right, Doc? Yep. That's the future protection. So once you got it, now you got things that you, you, you're immune to. Hey, wow, natural immunity. Natural immunity, okay. So this is something really, really cool. All right, here we go. Next one, I just wait. I, I, I'm a little, I don't have my little clicker. So I'm busting doctor's chops. <laughs> She's here with me. All right, we're real. We're, we're running a real office. Everybody, was, we're on break right now. And I said, hey, we're gonna do this. Check that out. 
thing is awesome. Those are red blood cells. Those are platelets. So when you cut yourself, when you cut yourself, what, not what heals the gut. I gotta fix this. What heals the cut? Oh, I corrected that. Thank nice you. job there, Doc. I thought that was the correct. <laughs> what heals the cut? So when you get a cut, when you cut yourself, we all cut ourselves. We cut ourselves. What heals it? Is it uh, the band aid? Is it Neosporin? What did they do a thousand years ago without Neosporin, right? What heals the cut? So a couple of things happen, very simplified. When you have a cut first responder, I'm gonna tell you who the first responder is. First responder is your central nervous system. Remember the thing that controls everybody? First responder, central nervous system. So it's, hey, wow, there's a cut sends information to the brain, sets the alarm. And as soon as that's set, we got white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets that come out and it's gushing blood or just oozing or whatever it is. And it does that to clean, like it already knows. I gotta clean out this area, so I'm gonna bleed a little bit. I got white blood cells to attack anything that gets in. And I got platelets to start sealing and healing the wound. I gotta tell you, I'm not that smart. I mean, I, my wife won't even let me hang curtains in the uh, around the house. And here's a system that's in my body that can detect foreign objects, that can figure out how to clean the wound and keep it clean. Now you're a dirty person, you're gonna get infections. Yeah, you better get some good stuff to clean that thing out and everything's got germs on it. But for the most part, your body couldn't handle that. I'm not saying, don't clean it, don't clean the wound, and don't do that. Your body does that, don't put that. I'm saying your body has a mechanism to handle so much, right? Right, you slice off your arm, yeah, it's still gonna heal it, but you better make sure it's, it's clean and it's taken care of. But wow, what a wild ride that all of that is inside. That's pretty intense, that's really amazing. So there's an intelligence, not for just healing cuts and wounds, but I bet there's an intelligence for repairing uh, uh, you know, bruises and broken bones. It's, yeah, they gotta be in the right place, but guess what? The bones will heal, right place or not, it's gonna heal, it's got, it's got smarts. Doc, let's see what's next. Okay, so who's your first responder? Right there. Right there, first responders, ner nervous system. No matter what happens, the central nervous system's gotta be there to respond. Even when you faint, it's a response of your central nervous system because it's too much of an overload and actually can hurt you. So it overrides a lot of your things. So when you are eating and you're putting crappy food in your gut and you're getting all this acid reflux and heartburn, and your body's like, that's enough. And it sends signals that like uh, acid and burning. Hey, how am I gonna tell you to stop treating your body that way? A lot of people have arthritis, but they love to work out and they wanna be runners and they're doing the marathon. Hey, and their body hurts. Well, your body's trying to tell you, maybe marathon's not for you. I don't know, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. First responder, central nerve system. We want to make sure that that stays healthy. Oh, that's a couple of things. So the first thing that's laid down is the central nervous system. It controls everything in your body. And it's the first responder. What does that mean? That's the first response to any immune. So when there's a bacteria or a, a virus that comes in, the first thing that detects it is the, the, your first responder. The, whatever's out there tells your central nerve system, that tells the brain, and the brain sends out the platoon. The other picture we saw with the, the, the T helper cells and the T killer cells, and it sends everything out there. You get sick, you got a fever, you don't feel good, few days, bam, 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 and then you're back to normal, because while you were laying in bed, uh, binge watching your favorite shows, your innate intelligence was handling the attack on the virus and the bacteria pretty awesome. Now most of us do stupid, not, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that. Most of us, we, we keep covering our symptoms, 
now making it harder for our uh, nerve system. Now it's got to fight the infection and take care of all these nasty chemicals that you've put in. I'm not talking the good stuff. I'm talking the bad stuff. I'm not that, that night quill, day quill, you know, everyday quill. That, that, you know, all these things. We're going to suppress your cough. Well, if, if your lungs are trying to get that stuff out of it and you just take an over-counter to slow it down, maybe it won't leave. Maybe your, your stuff will last longer. Your body likes a fever because we boil water to get rid of bacteria. Your body creates fever to get rid of things. You're not going to die of a fever at 101 or 102. So unless you have other things going on and you're a pretty healthy person, take on that fever because I got a fever and it requires more cowbell. <laughs> so what decreases your innate immune function? Don't read these. Yet. What decreases you think about it? You know, right now they got people in their house and it's looking like they're going to keep them in their house for 21 to 28 days. There are people that are already losing their minds nine, ten days into this thing, and they're already at the parks and they're walking and they got their masks on. And, but sitting around doing nothing is one way to decrease your immune system and your innate function. Physical, emotional stress. I mean, this is all going on. This, can, this is like right out of a movie. Everybody is inside watching the news, hysterical about what's going on stressing themselves out. They got an unhealthy diet. Um, we were at this grocery shop. Doc was at the grocery shop. Uh, all the all the Chef Boyardees and packaged foods. They said the produce wasn't taken. But all this packaged food and canned food. <sighs> when this thing ends, it's going to be intense. Chemicals in the air and water. You know, get it clear with, uh, you know, filtration system. Old injury, sports injury, repetitive, and just bad posture. And nowadays, everybody on the phone, everybody on their cell phone, they're just bad, bad posture. We want to make sure we fix that. And one of these things, this is what I work for, Dr. LaSella and I. We are specialists in a condition called subluxation, all right? Subluxation has three factors. There's an emotional factor, a chemical factor, and a physical factor. And most people will come to us and be like, They'll think they're, that they don't, they don't understand what they ate can cause their stress in their innate nerve system. Uh, they don't understand that all that chemicals and uh, preservatives and whatever junk it is that's in these foods they put inside their body has an effect on their central nerve system. They don't understand that their mental stress and their job stress affects them. But most people understand, ah, physical, behind the computer, all of these things. And what happens here, that's not a great picture, but this is your spine. These are the nerves, kind of like the similar, like the pictures I showed before. And we're seeing a healthy nerve here. And when there's a healthy nerve, remember, I told you, your central nerve system is your first responder. So your brain can send information back and forth. And that's the key. But what happens when we're on our cell phones all the time? We're putting junk food in our bodies. We're constantly under stress. We can feel the tension come up and down our spine. And that creates this inability for the central nerve system, for your innate wisdom, for that innate immunity, for that innate function, that internal, the inside part to work properly. And that's where the sickness and then the disease process starts. So I want you guys to take that in. I know it's a lot right now. It's a long video. I did, this isn't quick health, health. This is not a joke. It's about you. So when these are out, when they, when these vertebras are out, it, it, it like, it's like putting a rubber band around your finger. If you leave that long enough, your finger is going to, and those nerves, they're due to all of this tension in the spinal cord nerve system, will start going. So if this goes to the stomach, you're going to have a lot of stomach issues. It goes to digestive, a lot of digestive. If this goes to your cardiovascular system, and it, we know all the arteries 
and veins are still controlled by the central nerve system. Remember, dilate open up, I mean, dilate and contract, dilate and contract, all your arteries and, and uh, uh, your blood system right there. It's controlled by the nerve system. So if that's out of whack, blood pressure could be out of whack. If that's out of whack, you have sleeping problems. If that's out of whack, you got all these symptoms. And then you go and take more and more drugs. Doc, can I get the next one? All right. So, so what can you do to keep yourself, you know, exercise? Eat right, drink water. Those are, hey man, you should know those things. You don't need that from me. But what you don't know, what the key thing is, to keep your innate system working at its best. One more time, Doc. Drum roll. Pew. Again, everybody knows the chiropractic helps with neck pain, back pain, headaches, and sciatica. Yeah, that's what most people. If you're new to this, you you even know that. But man. And let me tell you, when your nerve system is working and your innate uh, internal system that controls your lungs and all of that, well, you can have less if, you know, some people have it pretty bad, but most people don't. And we've been able to help people live better lives and need less of their inhalers. We were told these people had, like, unfortunately, allergists don't like me. I could tell you that because... Once people start getting their spine in alignment, get their nerve system, getting that, that central nerve system flowing again and less stress on that, um, they rarely have their allergic reactions. Digestive complaints, all of these things are all those signs that your body is out of whack and we can help you. But most people still don't realize that chiropractic doc, drum roll, here we go. Everybody knows that chiropractic helps with all that, but most people don't know that chiropractic helps your innate immune system, your innate body to function at its best. It allows the central nerve system to have the least amount of cord pressure, uh, orthopedic bone pressure, so it can work at its best. Wow, that was your, that was your potential. And now you're sitting behind a desk for 10 hours a day. You're sitting on your phone two hours a day. You're sitting on your couch. You're doing all these things. You're doing, you're jumping on boxes, falling off of them in CrossFit. You're doing all of these things, hammering your spine. And it controls your entire well-being. That's what I want you to think about. So our job here. What we're experts at is finding and detecting where the spine is, has its subluxation, where it's locked. That's what we our specialty is here. Opening up, making sure that the central nervous system is free. Do I treat anything? Absolutely not. I'm not a treater of headaches or back pain. People come to me with these problems, but I don't treat these things. These are not what I do. What I do is I have one thing is I look for where the subluxation is in the spine. I work to correct it and I work to free up the wisdom of the body who's way, way smarter than me. I like, I know like Dr. LaSalle too, we love to get all the accolades. Oh God. I'm so much better because of you. Man, I wish I was that powerful. I'm not. I'm just removing interference. I'm not a healer. I'm not that good. The only thing that heals is your own body. I'm a tool to help you remove interference so your body can heal itself. Your body has all the intelligence. We're just here to make sure that you live with passion and really enjoy life. I know what it is to be sick. I know what it, it takes when you have family members that are sick. And uh, we want to be here for you. I want to thank you guys for joining me. Thank Dr. LaSalle for helping me on this project. Uh, we'll, uh, if you have questions or concerns, go ahead and comment in the bottom uh, areas below. We'll get back to them as soon as we can. Again, the LAChiropractor.com right here in Century City. Uh, we're here to take care of you. I'll talk to you soon.